It's time for the Giz Wiz with Matt's Maddest Writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1973, recorded Thursday, February 1st, 2024. Personal Headspace. On this episode of the Giz Wiz, I have the final two gadgets from CES. We take a look at the most expensive gadgets from the show, and I have a brand new crappy corner theme. All next on the Giz Wiz. It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG Chat on your PC. It's time for the Giz Wiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a Gizmo sickness, geek disease, under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue. Get ready for the Giz Wiz now. now. Now, here he is, not your handyman, but your gadget man, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing good. Doing great. We are Tomorrow, in February. We are fe February 1st. Yep. A 12th oh, of the year. Oh, do you know, year. on the 20th, uh -huh. we will celebrate 18 years of his whiz. Holy moly. It Eight. started on February 20th, 2006. Can oh. you believe it? <laughs> that is crazy. We yeah. need to give ourselves like one of those, uh, you know, good employee badges, you know, that they yeah, give. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's 18 years be, of service. Got to be up there with. Uh, one of the first. That's crazy. Well, that, that was is... with Leo back, and Leo was one of the first with, uh, he was on the air for a year before that. So, <laughs> Man, that is crazy. And how, how long, how many, in, how many years independent? That was, uh, oh, I think we're we... now longer independent than we were with Twit. Could, yeah, it could be. I, I, think was... I You know, first it was just radio. Right. And Leo was doing it like out of a bathroom or something. It yeah, was, no, it was the, I think he, so it was the cottage. He was just oh, renting the cottage, yes. only yes. one office. That was like a whole. Yes, yes, exactly. And then he slowly took over the entire building. Yes. And that was, I was the last employee at the cottage. Oh, you were? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have a desk. I had a, a chair sometimes. Um <laughs> Sometimes you'd fight for, they had a, uh, a big um, dinner table set up in the living room of this house and people would sit around it. And if there was just too many people in the office that day, you'd <laughs> like, I did not have a spot to sit. I'd have to like sit on a lounge you know, chair. Do you know that business is going back in that direction? I was talking to Susie Hutchinson, which is... The one person left who works on MAD, and she said, um, this is about a year ago, she said, they have now at Warner Brothers removed all the offices and set up a huge room with computer desks. And in the morning, you call in and say, I, I want to work in the studio today, can you save me a desk? And, and I said, so you have no personal filings, uh, a place to keep a thermos, uh, candy bars? She said, no. They try to give you the same desk, but if a lot of people are coming in, uh, you may phone in and they might say, don't come in, we have no room for you. Yeah. So I was thinking, what a way to work. Yeah, I agree. I don't like it. Uh, I loved having a desk, especially when working on, you know, so as many projects as I was working on. And you'd have physical stuff that you'd have to set yeah. down somewhere. You know, you'd get yeah. a book, you'd get a gadget, you'd get something. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, no, I don't, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I like having a spot. Um, I think that people have really gotten used to the the share work spaces, you know, the, the, we work yes, sort of things. Yes, yes, yeah. And yeah, that's something you, you pop in and you don't have an office, but I think that 
people like having offices. I think, or, or not just offices, but just even a place, not even, you know, cubicle. Yeah, an office is great because you can, you know, like, uh, I mean, basically, this is what my office looked like at MAD. And yeah. when I just said, oh, I'll take everything home. Yes, um, yes. But. Just a desk. I, honestly, just a desk. And that's all I had at Twit. It was great. And have a desk. That's my desk yeah, right there. Yeah, you have there. stuff in there. You have a, a fold-up umbrella. Exactly. You have a shave kit in case you didn't get a chance Put to Put your shave. lunch down. Yeah. 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 Totally, yeah. totally. I'm excited because tomorrow I will be spatially computing. Oh, it's I'll, coming tomorrow? Tomorrow is the big day. Oh, my God. Uh, it's been a fast rollout. Yes. Very fast. <laughs> Um, but we're talking about Vision Pro, the Apple Vision Pro. I'm getting one, and I couldn't be more excited. Uh, the review embargo dropped on Tuesday, and so everybody's been actually able to share and talk about it and take photos and and everything. And uh, I couldn't be more excited. Every 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 review, every time I hear criticism in the review, I'm like, I, that does not bother me. That is, like I'm not. <laughs> I see. Like every time that I'm like, oh, here's the downside that I'm worried about. Right. Yeah. Um, and it just hasn't been an issue. Even um, I, it was Nick Bilton in Vanity Fair said he kept saying, "There's this one issue. There's the one problem," and then I'm about to get to it. And he like went like three paragraphs in without like except for the one problem. And his one problem was that he wanted to spend more time in it, but. Oh. Normal reality seemed too two dimensional and archaic. I see. It's like you can't claim that that is a con of the device is that you wanted to use it more, That's and that normal funny. life is now empty and devoid of fun <laughs> for you. It's not a con. I don't understand. Anyway, that's how I that's felt reading a lot of these reviews. Um, oh, that's very funny. So that's I'm very very, very excited about it. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if the world of spatially computing means anything. Good news is I could just return it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, spatially computing, it's not for me. Oh, do they, have a, do they have a test period? Uh, yeah, you can. it's like any Apple product. So you can just return it if you want. <laughs> you get a full oh, refund. Okay. One time. Yeah, that's why I, I kept thinking to myself, I, this is the best way to try it. Because if I absolutely hate it, I can just get my money back. I've never had a restocking fee from Apple ever before. And I have returned $1,000 laptops uh, before um, because I didn't wow. like the color. Is it like a 30-day thing or yeah, two I think weeks? It's about, yeah, you get 30 days or maybe oh, that's, 14 that's days. That's great. Yeah. Ah, two weeks, Scooter X, who knows everything. Ah, Scooter X is two weeks. Yeah, so it's, yeah, 14 days is typical. Yeah. So um, I know Keep going for 14 days, right? So you get a 14 day trial. Um, I'm I plan that probably I'm not I, I'm not going to return. It. I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, if, <laughs> if I'm like spatial computing is not for me, there is a a parachute. I have a escape plan. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Okay, well, let's jump into it, shall let's we? Let's jump in. Yeah, I'm excited to see. I don't know what the two gadgets left that you okay. found are. Perfect. So this is a, um, I, I kind of learned in the middle of this interview that this is probably not a gadget for everybody based on um, how you get the gadget, how you get it installed. Um, but okay. this is a pretty cool uh, nonetheless. So uh, here's uh, the first of the last of the gadgets from CES. We're here at Showstoppers CES 2024, and at, I'm here with Niels at Nobi. Give me the elevator pitch of what I'm looking at. It looks like a lamp, but I can tell that it's a bit more than just a lamp. Oh, absolutely, and if it looks like a lamp, then we did our job right. Um, but uh, secretly, we tucked away quite a bit of technology in there, um, and the main purpose for Nobi is to uh, monitor seniors that um, choose to either live in congregate living environments, so senior living, be an independent living, assisted living, or memory care, uh, or decided not to do that and remain at home and age in place. Um, so the purpose for Nobi there is to monitoring and make sure that those people in whichever environment they chose to live in are doing so safely and happily. 
Um, we monitor specifically for falls, mostly. Um, ideally, we like to prevent that fall. If we can't, we detect it. And the way we do that is AI-driven technology that resides in the lamp. We have an optical sensor that is ultimately monitoring the resident in there or the senior in their living room spaces and uh, will, in fact, ask a question if it perceives a person that it thinks is on the floor, uh, whether they have fallen or not. If the answer to that question is anything but a clear no, then uh, we trigger an alert that gets sent out to the person that needs to be notified. That could be the caregiver on site, that could be uh, a response center that is taking a call, is doing the triage, and is determining what the next level of action is going to be. That is honestly incredible, and that is a ton of information super packed in there. Uh, like, what, first off, just to unpack a bit of that, what type of sensors are included? Like, what is the sensor suite? So, there's a few different technologies built in there. We have an optical sensor that lays out and maps out the room and will monitor um, the environment. Ultimately, what it does, it creates images and it will determine whether or not the person is in a safe position. Um, we can determine whether they're in bed, out of bed, getting out of bed, whether they're actually present in the room. And then based on that, turn the lights on, um, help them get out of bed safely, or notify people if they see, hey, we haven't seen movement in X minutes or X hours. All customizable depending on the person we're monitoring. I didn't think about that. Is If you're be able to detect falls or positions of people, you can also kind of detect routine things as well, like waking up and then automate the lights based off of that action. That's really awesome. So uh, how, like, what does a typical like setup process yep. look like? Um, very simple. It is like going to the store, buying yourself a new light fixture, and putting that on the ceiling. That said, if the person who purchases our equipment isn't capable or willing to do that, um, we have our own installation arm that can support with that. We cover coast to coast. We have licensed electricians that can do the work for us and, uh, and make sure that the equipment is up and running, doing what it's supposed to do, and we have a happy customer underneath. Uh, and uh, just to make sure I'm perfectly clear, are, are, uh, are you getting alerts through like an app or is it more of like a phone call or like kind of what's, how, how am I being notified? Good question. And it could be a, a healthy mix of all of the above. So again, depending on the environment that we're in, um, it's going to be a specific recipient to the notification. So that could be a caregiver in a, in a senior care community. If uh, we have a person who's looking to age in place, who's living at home, um, different story. So in that case, we have partnerships with some of the leading emergency response uh, call centers here in the country that could take that call, triage it, and then determine the next action. Um, or it could be a family member. Um, and to your point, it can be a text message, it can be a phone call. We have a very sleek looking app that will run on Android and iOS that family members can have access to and determine what level of footage, what level of data they're going to provide or are going to be able to access. Yeah. And I'm curious, uh, is there, are there, is there like maybe a whole community like a, you know, I think of an apartment complex, but obviously for, for retirees that are installing these like, like in the entire facility or is it typically like one to one? No, absolutely. We, uh, so if, if we are talking to senior living providers, we are typically talking to the, the, the operators of those communities. And in that case, yes, they'll select either an entire department, an entire wing, or in some cases, if we're lucky, the entire building. Yeah, so. <laughs> You're like, yeah, the entire building. Uh, finally, uh, what is the cost? What is the typical cost uh, per device? And then is there a cost to maintain? And then also, uh, is it in the market uh, currently? Like, what's, where's your... Uh, absolutely, yeah. So it's... Um, there is essentially a hardware cost that's associated with the lamps, and then we do have a what we call our care membership, which is a monthly fee, which uh, will, will ensure that you have the latest and greatest at all times. We can update any new features. We can obviously, as we're an AI-driven solution, our AI gets smarter every day, uh, so we can make sure that everybody's benefiting from that as well. So that's what the care membership fee would encompass. As to the cost, it's really de dependent on where we're installing and where we're selling. Um, so for the people that are aging in place, the consumer market, as we've dubbed that, we go through resellers, and it's very often those resellers that determine what the uh, what the cost is going to be for the lift. So you'll just ask for a quote from those. Correct. Correct. And, and they have the relationship. You know, they have a portfolio of products they bring to people that are aging in place, and Nobi becomes a part of that portfolio. Yeah. Awesome. And where can people find out more? Uh, so online, our website is nobi.life, uh, L-I-F-E in that particular case. All of our information is there. We are soon going to be loading information regarding our resellers on there as well. Um, won't be there just yet, but there is a, a contact form that will lead you straight to us, and we'll be happy to answer any questions they have. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. Also, uh, it looks like you're being interrupted because you all just won an award, it looks like. Oh. The gadget, the gadgety awards, best of showstoppers 2024. So.
I'll be the first to say congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> okay, well, check out what's around here a little bit more. <laughs> I forgot that they were winning the award as I. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we have, we have no ballpark figure of what this might cost. No. And that's what I got at the end. I was like, wait, what? There's no, there's no cost? Um, and so, but, yeah, so even when you click products, it just kind of explains you got the pendant, the ceiling. So there's no camera anywhere, right? So I think there is a camera um, because of these type of like descriptors on their website. It's NVIDIA processor analyzes all images locally and, de and then deletes them if oh. no fall incidents occurs. Oh, um, okay. So, so there, it sounds like there is a camera, but it is yeah. doing it on device to determine a potential issue. So I, it seems a little too business to business at the moment. Um, I think which is so too. A little sad, but um, I could see this kind of being like an upgraded, what, a life alert type of situation. Yeah. Um, from the response of the chat room, I don't think anyone tr trusts this though <laughs> with their privacy. And I could see maybe some, you know, cutting edge millennials getting on board with this, but I could see it being a difficult sell to give, yeah. to tell someone who's aging, hey, we're going to stick a camera in your house and we're going to see if you fell. And, you know, just trust us. <laughs> this camera isn't sending to anyone. It just seems like a trust exercise that I don't think they're going to win every time. Um, yeah. So... Um, interesting concept. I mean, I, I I think that it would be really cool if this was possible to do it without cameras, if there was a type of sensor um, that would work without cameras, and then also if it was less expensive, um, and then maybe even a whole suite of products that didn't need to be lamps. Um, I could just see, you know, just a little device that sits on a shelf that can see, you know, all the room. Um, I like the lamps because they're high up in the ceiling. They can see yeah, a lot. Of the, yeah, yeah. You know, and that yeah. kind of makes sense. Also, if you're going to be having a conversation like, uh, you know, did you fall? <laughs> you know, you kind of want that to be in a central location. You can hear it. Um, but uh, I, so I like the base technology. I'm not sure if this is um, quite the killer product. Um, yeah. That. Did he give a hint of what Nobi is, how they got to Nobi? No, I didn't ask him about the name. Nobi. Okay. No BS? B. No B, no B. Uh, <clears throat> no. No B on the ground anymore. <laughs> no B alone <laughs> in your apartment. No mm -hmm. B. No B salesman will call. <laughs> Um, okay, so moving on, uh, taking okay. a look at a privacy, we went from a gadget that's kind of a non-privacy gadget to okay. a very privacy-focused gadget. So okay. let's take a look at SkyTed. We're here at Showstoppers at CES, and we're here with SkyTed. So I, I, you guys have been actually around for a little while, right? I think that I've seen a few products from you guys in the past. Exactly, yeah. We've been at there CES last, year. last year already. And tell me about what y'all are showing today. So we have the brand new SkyTed mask. The goal of the mask is really to be able to conduct silent, confidential, and secure calls anytime, anywhere. So the way it works is when you put on the mask, people around you won't be able to hear a word you're saying, but the person you're actually trying to talk to via your phone will hear everything. That's really crazy. So it like the first impression is it looks a little bit like, you know, a mask that you would wear during COVID. But you're saying that this will keep all the conversations you're having private and have a mic that will speak to whoever you're talking Exactly, yeah. So I can show you how it works. I can put the mask on. I'm going to continue speaking, and you won't hear a single word. This is going to be awkward. Go ahead. Go ahead and start. It's going to be awkward for everyone else. Of course. <laughs> they won't be able to hear you. Yeah, but right now I'm speaking, and I'm going to put the mask on. So right now I'm, I'm standing right here, and I cannot tell. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Impressive. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now, I do see one behind you with a screen on it. Is that just for display purposes, or are they actually going to come with screens on them? So this has two main purposes. The first one is really to showcase what we can do here at SkyTed. 
we can definitely customize our masks all the way, like really. If you want to put an le LED on there, you can just to give any information you want. And the second reason is because we're aiming at, uh, at gamers. And gamers like to have customizable items. They like to put replays on there, put ads, put their team name as well. So yeah, the two, two main reasons for that. That's really, really crazy. That's, I, I mean, I'm looking at it and I almost feel like with the privacy aspect that it could also like, if you were worried about COVID, it would like do like closed captioning like on, on the front of it. That was my first impression. That was pretty cool. So uh, is uh, currently in the market and what's price point? So we just launched our Kickstarter yesterday. So we're really, really hyped about that. Uh, we're looking at 349 for the, the Kickstarter version. So that's a, a good discount you have there. That's awesome. And where can people find more information? So more information can be found directly at skyted.io. So that's S-K-Y-T-E-D.io. And then on the website, you'll find information about how, who we are, what we do, and of course, this Kickstarter. Thank you so much for spending yeah. some time with me. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> There you go, Skyted, Ted, Sky Ted. Sky Ted, yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, I guess if you're a businessman and you're on an airplane and have to talk privately, it would be worth it. Uh, it seems, it seems like it, the cone of silence yeah. um, is <laughs> kind of, but except that it has a microphone in it. It seems like this is something yeah. that they should pitch to like government agencies and things like that. It's like how to keep real conversations private. Um, so yeah. yeah, here's their Kickstarter. We gotta check that out. Oh yeah, five, five days years. ago, oh my God. I noticed that their goals now, everybody's making them really low so that oh. they can suddenly say, we have, we're 5,000% <clears throat> above what we asked for. Definitely. I feel like sometimes they just use this as a pre-order form. <laughs> So they yeah, set it yeah. set it really low just so that they get as many people as they can to join the Kickstarter. Um, I think you're so, yeah. right. I think <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I could definitely see this having. Um, oh, I wonder if there's a Gizwiz logo somewhere somewhere in this uh, uh, logo. ABC. Yeah, I did it on ABC. Ah, oh, there we go. So yeah, so I, I, I I'm interested to see if uh, it takes off if if. You see a lot of people having, you know, that's the thing that I would worry about having a, a conversation is that not only do other people overhear it, but maybe I'm just being rude. And so if this has the yeah. ability to make it so that no one can hear that I'm on a phone call and I need to make an important phone call, I'd be interested. Um, now, am I going to carry this around with me all the time just for that to pop up? No. No, I'm not probably ever going to do that. But if I worked at the CIA, maybe, or if I was a VP at a very important company and I got tired of people listening to my calls, maybe. Um, so yeah, I think it, I think it'll have a, it has a spot, but. Uh, Don't wear this if you have the Nobi and it says, have you fallen? <laughs> Excuse me, I just. Yeah, what happens if the if your lamp is trying to talk to you and you have a sky ted strapped to your face? What is he gonna do? I agree. Um, okay, well, those were the last two gadgets from CES. Um, um, okay, so I was back here reading all the press releases and attending a lot of endless meetings, and um, uh, as I mentioned. On, on Twit was I used to go down to find the real cheap crappy stuff, but when you're watching virtual shows, <laughs> nobody has the money to do a Zoom meeting and show you real crap. Okay, <laughs> so I went looking for really expensive things, but one of the not too expensive things that I wanted was the uh, keyboard that you found. So I just lifted your video, and so uh, I asked the executive producer over there, can I just run my spot on my podcast? And he said, absolutely. So these are some expensive things from CES, done very quickly because ABC likes 30 seconds a gadget. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Every year I feel surely we could not get more advanced in technology. We've reached the pinnacle, right? 
But then comes the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. And this morning, our own Gizwiz Dick DiBartolo is here to share his favorite offbeat gadgets from CES 2024. Dick, great to see you as always. The same. Welcome back to me. That's right. <laughs> this is all about getting Dick D on the show. And, you know, I'm pretty proud of my setup in my living room. But then I see this TV you're about to show us, Dick. This is a TV like no one has ever seen before. What looks like a piece of sculpture is the CC'd N1 4K TV. In 60 seconds, five panels unfold silently to create a monumental 137-inch micro-LED display. It can rotate right or left up to 180 degrees. And the indoor model costs about $200,000. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Do we have anything a little more affordable for us mortals, Dick? Well, you know what? For $190,000, a personal plane. The Helix is the first production ultralight all-electric aircraft in the U.S. It's a single-seat personal aircraft, requires no pilot license, but training is required. It has a range of 20 miles, daytime flying only. There's vertical takeoff and landing. And prices start at about $190,000 delivery this June. Yeah, I need like a five below booth at CES. <laughs> things that I could afford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, how about um, computers? Uh, something a little smaller, Dick. Okay, a little smaller. Something for Lenovo, a two-in-one. And it's very interesting. Watch. The Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid is both a Windows laptop and an Android tablet. The bottom half runs Windows 11, but when you remove the detachable screen, it becomes an Android tablet. Both have their own battery and, while operating separately, can still share files. Lenovo also showed a concept version of eye-catching animated e-ink laptop covers. Okay, that is very cool. A little more affordable for me. Now, Dick, we're always hearing about AI, so where are we with robots? Any new robots coming our way? Uh, a lot of robots, and this is a cute little one from Samsung. Take a peek. Samsung's latest ball-y robot is now an AI companion that can let you know what your pet is doing, show your pet videos, show you helpful videos on the wall or ceiling, can wake and control smart devices, even welcome you home. No price or availability has been announced yet. Yet. I love it. Looks like BB-8 from Star Wars. Okay, last <laughs> but not least, Dick, we're bringing it back to old school with this one. Oh, we are. Someone has introduced a regular keyboard for <laughs> some of the higher-end iPhones. Take a peek. The Clix keyboard got a lot of attention. It may seem old tech, but this physical keyboard case can add up to 50% more display area normally used by the virtual keyboard. The QWERTY keypad can be backlit when needed, and it will soon be available for the iPhone Pro Series starting at $139. Dick D, you're the best in your website, of course, gizwiz.biz. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A lot of fun. <laughs> that is so cool, Diggy D. So do you want the uh, electric? Heck yeah. The ultralight um, <laughs> portable ultralight. flying. Heck now, yes. The, it's kind of vague. The FAA said only for, uh, not for congested areas. So <laughs> are you sort of in the sticks where you are? No. Nah. Hmm. Definitely not New York. Not next to, I'm not, you know, I don't know how close uh, I would have to be for, you know, I wonder how far away you need to be from an airport, I guess. Oh, no, nothing to, no, no, you don't want, want to go anywhere near an airport. No. But, now, it know, is, it being an ultralight, I, I remember from the Mythbusters days, ultralights don't require licenses, like you mentioned. Um and yeah, you'd probably want to do some training, but it being battery operated is so interesting. Very yeah. now, interesting. The guy said that for now it's limited to 20 miles at 20 miles an hour. But, but still, that as battery could, technology improves, he even said, if yeah. it was just a mile, if I could skip all of traffic yeah. and just go to the Walmart <laughs> and back, you know, like. If, if I could just, you know, get from one spot to another, um, 
typically I'm not moving more than five miles away from my house for any oh yeah okay one okay. thing. Um, and you know, I assume the 20 miles is max range, so to get there and back, 10 miles, you probably want to leave in a little bit of buffer. I five, would, yeah. <laughs> you know, five, it sounds like five miles is about you know what you could do on a single trip. I do think that the future of aviation is in electronic aviation. I think that we haven't quite seen that take off yet, and I think that there is a market for smaller airplanes. No, we're not talking about Airbuses. We're talking about No, this is this is a per, a personal uh weight limit I believe was 250 pounds for the pilot. Uh, you know, it's a single seater. Yeah. Um yeah. and the fact that you can take off and land vertically, you do it in your driveway. It's it, it's pretty uh it's pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. There was one other tech thing there that I didn't wasn't able to get video of from uh, Boston Whaler with the first autonomous boat docking boat. Um, that's going to start. Uh, the boat itself is the the biggest Boston Whaler, which I think is forty feet, and I believe it's powered by three six hundred horsepower Mercs. Um, and the one review. Of uh, one of the the guys <laughs> whose work I followed, he said, "If you are an experienced boater or a captain, you're going to sit there and go, how long is it going to take this boat to dock itself?" <laughs> it said, "However, that's how I feel with auto parking in my Tesla. Is yeah. oh yeah. my, I can just park this thing three times faster than the auto park feature." Yes, yes. So. But in the boating industry, one of the, I believe, 70% of the people who won't buy a boat said the main reason is I can't dock it. Yeah. And yeah. so the fact that you could get a boat and let it dock itself um, would be amazing. Uh, but the whalers, without anything, I think, believe, I believe they start at $1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh. These yeah, that would definitely hit your list of the most expensive gadgets on yes, the. Uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. We're here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's as. Uh, well, what did you think? think of that keyboard? By the way, uh, I think I, I the the, the clicks keyboard for the iPhone. Yeah, well, that, that's right. We did it. it. It is expensive, though, right? It's expensive, but and personally, for me, I like the auto complete. <laughs> I like. Uh -huh. I like okay. auto, you know, typing the the too much. Um, okay. Although the keyboard shortcuts that they showed off are just so cool, like so so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I should get something that big for the Vision Pro. I just life <laughs> um, is going to be. I should buy a special chair for my Vision Pro. <laughs> Uh, you know, now that I can see through my Vision Pro, I have to get better furniture. <laughs> exactly. Now I can see the the surroundings. Oh no. Well, the I good I, friends. I still can't tell if it's gonna if I'm gonna feel like an absolute dork out and about in public. Is is if it's possible to go to Starbucks, you know, that'd be great. I'd have I'd have a triple monitor. So I'd have more than a triple. I'd have a 360 degree monitor set up wherever I go, but if I'm too worried, I'm going to be made fun of. <laughs> no, oh, I don't well, think I'd well, do you, it. I, I tell you, you will, um, I'm tipping off Moe's letter. You will look less obvious than what Mo was asking. Okay. Would okay. This. okay, 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 that's yeah, good. That to look forward to. That's good, that's good. Okay. Um, okay. The other thing is, is when, if I, <laughs> You know, I see Vision Pro. I feel like it's the upgraded, evolved version of someone wearing a Bluetooth headset and not taking it off to talk to you. Like if you're oh, having yeah. a conversation with someone in Vision Pro, it's like, okay, at any moment you're gonna get like a pop up <laughs> and just like go away. Um, oh, that's, that's funny. Anyway, so we'll see. Okay. Well, with that. Uh, oh, and the most boy, expensive guy to see. It's uh, 
It's, it's, I think we've wrapped up CES pretty nicely. Yeah, we did. We did it. Okay, well, with that, let's get out of CES and head to the crap side of town. You know you don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it. Okie dokie, we are back with another crappy corner. It has been a month, and so it's good to be back. It's just feeling good. So I asked the patrons what they wanted the crappy corner to be, and the options were bathroom gadgets, hiking gadgets, or couples slash Valentine's Day gadgets. So what um, do you think? Knowing our chat room, bathroom gadgets. They're you are not, correct. Correct. Not hiking. <laughs> And they figure, well, if I pick Valentine's Day, by the time we get to the end of February, it's going to be old hat. <laughs> so. so you are correct. Bathroom okay. gadgets, 47%. Oh, is, my uh, gosh. <laughs> it's a good amount. Good amount of, uh, of votes. Yeah. Um, so I uh, went to the store to grab a bathroom gadget and recorded it. So here we are. Hey Diggity, so obviously bathroom gadgets won, so we are starting off in a bathroom. Today's gadget is if you want to have a nice spa day in your bathroom, well, you may want to add a scent diffuser into the mix. This one is specifically made to go into the shower, so your spa day in the shower can have nice scents, so you can really feel relaxed and uh, exactly how you want to. So uh, this is a uh, battery operated diffuser that will uh, diffuse these essential oil pods into the room. So let me get this open. There are a few pieces inside of the box, but first off we have the diffuser and then we also have the little mounting pad to put this onto the wall and it has instructions on the back of it, so you can easily check those right before you add it to the wall. Uh, and then on the other side of the diffuser is a little mounting point, which uh, fits that little pad perfectly. And then also, this is the compartment for the batteries. So let me go ahead and get that open and add the batteries. It requires two AA batteries. Well, turns out the batteries are included. If I read the fine print, it actually mentions that they're included. So <laughs> I didn't have to do this at all. Okay, uh, reading the instructions, I mentioned to not put this directly next to the shower head, put it on the wall opposite the shower head, and then press for 30 seconds. It also recommends waiting 24 hours before uh, you use it. I don't think we have to actually wait 24 hours. So once that's there, we can attach the actual diffuser and we need to actually put the essential oils into the bottom of the diffuser. The oils come in two parts. You have a wick part and then you also have the actual oil. So you take the cap off of this, set that to the side, take your wick, dunk it in there, screw that on, uh, new oil pods are about $5.99, so about six bucks. And then before you attach it into the diffuser, this is where you choose basically how much uh, smell you would like. Oh, so wow. we'll go for a lot here, yeah, that's so we're nice. just testing it. Let me make sure that that's on there tight. There we go, and now we're, we're going to add it into the diffuser until it clicks. Oh, that was very simple. And then all you have to do is click the on button. Ooh. I can hear a little fan that is running, and the box even mentions the, the soothing LEDs that are included. Are you not soothed by the LEDs? <laughs> so what's really nice about this is that uh, this diffuser, which I can actually already smell it, um, can work in the shower. So with all the humidity and all the steam and all the heat, uh, this will run. Uh, it also has an auto on off feature. So um, by the time, you know, you could basically just turn it on and then walk away um, and then uh, it would turn off. So you kind of get to experience it while you're just here in the shower. Now I still need to take a shower with it, but I can actually say it's been on for a few minutes. I can definitely smell the 
the aromas. The aromas are in the air. So honestly, so far, I, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. So back to you guys. It is 30 bucks, $30 um, on uh, Target. Target is uh, where I ended up getting this. And like I mentioned, the, the extra pods are around six bucks. That uh, It's auto off feature, not auto on feature, by the way. The auto off feature is just an eight minute timer. So a, you know, about as long as you would take a shower, you might have to, if you take a really long shower, you may have to hit it a second time. Um, no, I think but, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I thought it was, a, and, and from um, using it, it is a very strong scent. Um, from what I've noticed, really all this is is a fan. <laughs> like it's really just a fan that kind of takes the, uh, the pod. Um, it's not really warming up or anything that I've oh, noticed. Yeah, I see. You know, I can kind of just remove it and kind of check it. Um, but it's doing a pretty good job of uh, diffusing it. Um, and then I also, I did get another oil diffusing pod. This one's uh, more of a lavender scent, which I typically like lavender. And what's kind of cool is it comes with this cool little cap. This is like a gadget in itself. Um, and this cap here on top is like, it, it uh, allows you to press it, press the top of it, and oh. you can see it'll squirt out a little bit of oil. So now I have a bit of oil on my uh, hand there, and so I could, if I wanted to use this as, as more of a um, topical uh, thing, um, you can do that. And that's, you know, it's just, it's just essential oil, that's all it is. Or, of course, I could take the cap off and then replace the wick that's in there, I'd reuse the wick and then add it and then stick it into the uh, diffuser if you want to use that. That's um, pretty neat. So yeah. So uh, I found this at Target. Um, the brand is Lifelines um, and they have a whole bunch of kind of uh, essential oil products, um, this Lifelines brand. Mm. Uh, here, here they oh, are. Oh, wow. Fine. I eat you know, the whole set. All, yeah. all of them for 20 bucks. And I kept seeing this pin. I'm not exactly sure what the pin is. Um, but yeah, there you go. So, no, I think it's, yeah, it's nice. I think this will be a fun uh, category, the bathroom gadget category. I have already uh, ordered a few fun little gadgets uh, to check out. So, that'll be this month's theme. We get five weeks yes. this month. Because so, today's the first, and it's, it's the and, first and sleep year, and it's a leap year. So we're gonna get five weeks out of this month, which is gonna yeah. be crazy. Um, so looking forward to that. Thank you, patrons, for um, your opinions on what the theme should be. You'll get a uh, new poll next month. With that, let's head into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. <laughs> They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In this gadget warehouse, Foghorn. Our email is from Steve C., who says, Hi, Dick and Chad. I don't have a video of a gadget, but a video from my new gadget. Ooh. It's a dash cam that I put in my vehicle to record crazy things while driving on the highway. Uh, two cameras front and back records at 1080p. Uh, and uh, he did say that not long in getting it installed, I was driving, came up behind a Martin Marietta cement truck that hit a bump and rocks came flying off. And cracked my windshield. Yikes. And so we'll be able to see the rocks flying off and hear them hitting at about 14 seconds in. That's, okay. That's not a fun day. <laughs> oh, no. Now let's check what out the video. The and there mm -hmm. it is. It's clear video. Yeah, it's very nice video. Waiting for. Trying to like uh, do like a where in the world are we? Yeah. 
You know, I don't... The windshield looks... I heard a smack. Yeah, I heard something too. There's a little... Looks like a little dent in the windshield. Now he's going to drive in front of it and crack his windshield. <laughs> We're going to get to see some road rage. <laughs> I yeah. You know, Steve C in chat. Uh, well, I don't see the crack windshield, but I do see like a chip down in the left lower left. Yeah, I definitely heard a a smack it's, up against yeah. it. Um, I'm sure that, that Steve knows exactly where to look. Fuck, yes, see, see the yeah. pixels that you there. Yeah, uh, I I am a strong strong believer in dash cams. Um, I it's so hard to even remember what was happening in the moment of an issue. I've had to use my dash cam footage twice now. Um, one of which would have, uh, I would have been liable. I would have been, I would have had to talk to my insurance because it was a, th this three car issue. Everyone agreed it wasn't my fault, but no one agreed whose fault it was the other two. <laughs> right. Um, they had like a collision and that ended up hitting me. And so my insurance couldn't you know, I couldn't, anyway, it was diff it was frustrating, and, uh, but I did have the footage, <laughs> I was like, I was in my lane, I was doing, I was doing nothing wrong, and I got hit, <laughs> um, and, uh, so anyway, I highly, 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 uh, suggest getting a dash cam, yeah. it just helps with claims so much, and yeah. they are pretty inexpensive, and no, Steve said mine was about $100. It came with a 64 gigabyte memory card. Now, Amazon said it was not available. See, currently not available. But on Walmart, it's, they're using the same photos um, as on Amazon, and it's $20 cheaper. Yeah. It's 80 yeah. bucks on Walmart, and it includes the 64 gigabyte cam. And I think they're nameless. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this I've is it's called Two God on Walmart, <laughs> not available on Amazon. If you were worried about the lamp that was going to spy on you, don't think too hard <laughs> about these little guys. Um, but I, I typically, uh, I've bought a few of them, and typically I just keep an eye on the, the reviews. Um, I've gotten some that uh, mount to the um, mirror. And um, also some that uh, just kind of suction cup up to the uh, the window, and um, uh, yeah. And now the Tesla, Captain Jay is saying, does Tesla help in any way? The Tesla now does it automatically. You just give it a USB key, and it uses <laughs> all the cameras that oh are already my, on oh the car. Oh my god! Yeah, and it, that's a really cool feature because it captures not only the front cameras but the side cameras and i think it even captures the back camera um yes. now so uh that's a nice feature <laughs> as well um but yeah dash cams i highly highly recommend them for for everyone cool uh, uh um cool so store steve, i like it. steve yeah. i'm glad that it worked out maybe you, you can <laughs> get your repair costs back yeah, exactly. Uh, and you will get a, the current issue of Mad Magazine. If you want to wait like three weeks, you can get the uh, February, you can get the April issue. Just let me know. Send me your uh, address. And if you want to make a video, it can be from a gadget. If, if you uh, have a camera that does something wonderful, anything to do with a gadget, uh, make a little video, one to three minutes. Uh, put it up on YouTube, and uh, as Steve did, use horizontal format, landscape format, and make sure we can hear your voice, describe what we're seeing. Uh, put it up on YouTube. You can click on listed. That way only people with the URL will be able to see it and send that to us, mail at gizwiz.tv. And we can uh, have something from Mo for next week, but we need more, more, more. gadgets. 
Especially send them never in. send something in. It's very easy. Very easy and fun. And, and fun. We, and we, it. we all love it. We don't judge. We don't make fun. Oh, We're, we, great time over here. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, with that, let's head into the letter. Become the letters, your lovely letters. Become the kids' letters now. Now. And most simply ask, Dick, would you wear this at Mad Magazine? And if you did, would anybody at Mad say anything? <laughs> and now... <laughs> <laughs> it's called your personal space helmet. It's hel that fully blocks office noise. Oh heck yeah. Oh man, what as accessory. There you go. Oh look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nothing For those who are on audio, this is like nothing, str nothing strange here. It's like as if it's a, this is a full size person, but they have the helmet sized to like a bobblehead. Like yeah. it is a massive. His helmet goes over the shoulders almost, and then it does have a cutout, but it's massive. I mean, it's just absolutely huge. Oh wait a minute, go back to that. That is actually an ad, Chad. So typically, you need a lot of space for one person but <laughs> if they're all wearing this oh man and that is of, perfect the for call of, centers as yeah. i hope that all the telemarketers get on this immediately what that, on earth that is but you know what i could not find anywhere where there was a, to order one no there's no or, way People were complaining about the Vision Pro being too heavy. Imagine putting this darn thing on your... How oh, my gosh, I need the one that's a Minion. Vision Pro. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I need the one that's actually a, uh, a bowling ball. That What on earth is that? Oh, that's so funny. That Honestly, Vision so Pro should have looked like this. <laughs> Those are goofy. I don't know. There's no way. There's no way. No. Honestly, I feel like a VR headset yes. could just be a helmet, but I, <laughs> this one, this massive helmet, I mean, it's just too big. It's That's just massive. A little too weird. Um, design boom is talking about this. That is so, so funny. Um, I feel like that's all we would have at the mad offices. You know, if yeah, that's was, what, yes. it was yeah. me and you running them, no cubicles. You just get yeah. these and a chair. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Oh. But the thing is, you would have no privacy at all if you None. had that. People would come in and go, hey, turn around. Show them what that looks like. Hey, Murray, come on in here. Look what, look what Dick is wearing. Could you imagine how humiliating it would be if you're working away and then you get a donk, donk, donk on the top of your <laughs> little helmet? Hey, I, I mean to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> Can you unhelmet yourself? I need to ask you a question. You're <laughs> under the helmet. <laughs> what do you want? Get out of here. I'm answering emails. <laughs> no. I'm not here right now. Um... That is hilarious, Mo. You always find the funniest things, yeah. the funniest gadgets on the internet. Uh, I want to say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for supporting our show. You guys support us every single episode. So if you like the show, please consider giving back, patreon.com slash gizwiz. Or you can head out to our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab at the top of the website and uh, there's a big old Patreon banner or there's also a tiny little link for PayPal if you want to support us through PayPal. Gizwiz.tv is the place where you can do that and that's also the place where you can watch live just about every Thursday 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. If you want to watch live, head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv and the website will update around that time with the live stream. If we are not live, that'll be either the most recent episode 
or the most recent Giz Fizz, if it uh, is near Wednesday. So head on over to our website often to uh, get all the updates. Also, all of our previous episodes are there as well. Gizwiz.tv. Gizwiz.biz is Dickie D's website where he writes articles about all of the gadgets that we talk about on this show. So if you ever need a link back to a gadget to see it again, Gizwiz.biz is the place to go. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? This is an entire gadget that you gotta guess what it is. And uh, I know what this gadget is. Um, if you ever yeah. get tired of misplacing your CR2032 batteries, you now have a chalice to keep them in a little cup to keep your ah. CR2032 batteries in. That's good. Uh, uh, if you think you know what this is, get a guess in six mad magazines for correct answers, 12 mad magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, or interesting answers. So get a guess in over at gizwiz.biz. That wraps it up for our show. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs>